Marinalo, no longer with WWE. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what ha- he went to um, back to uh, British Columbia where he grew up because his mother's been hospitalized, and so he missed a couple of shows. And you know, at the end of the day, I think that um, while he was up there, he kind of decided, and I don't, you know, I don't know what the the whole situation is, but he pretty much decided that uh, he wasn't going to come back. And um, it's it's been you know kind of a tumultuous last couple of years there anyway um you know with things here and there but he's going to continue to do uh bell tour and um obviously showtime boxing and the way i was told is that when he was up there you know i'm sure that you know i mean he wasn't able to do the shows and i think that there was a, it was kind of told to me that like he's he's 50 years old and it kind of brought into perspective that his he's here to be a mental health advocate and you know um the doing wrestling and being and re- doing wrestling every single week under that pressure is not what he's here for and i think it's just one of those things where he reached a certain you know it's like working for wwe when it was wwf was his childhood dream and he got to do it for five years and i think that's there's always more to the story you know just like with renee young there's always reasons you know that you make the decision but ultimately you know um this was not a big blow up or anything like that it was just he just felt that it was time to go and his mother being sick and him having to miss these shows evidently put that in perspective so that explains, uh, you know, the negotiations with uh, Stu, Stu Bennett, Wade Barrett, and I'm sure that he'll get that spot. Uh, Nigel McGinnis, um, his position doesn't look good. He hasn't been around since April, and there's really no reason. I mean, him being furloughed is still one of those great questions on why you would do that, considering he was the best color guy in the whole company. But, you know, that was the decision, and I would presume that... Um, Bennett would also end up on It's not about being a great color guy. I mean, that's the answer. Yeah. (laughs) It sucks. Yeah. I mean, when you think about the Mauro Ranallo situation, I mean, it really sucks because this was his childhood dream, and he was there for a little while, and now he doesn't want to do it anymore. That's sad. It's reality. Yeah. Um, he He liked NXT, though. You know, I mean, he did. He really liked working for NXT. He liked he liked doing takeovers. I mean, he really loved calling those the really great matches. You know, the ones that everybody raved about, like Gargano and Ciampa, and uh, Gargano and Andrade, Cien Almas, and Adam Cole and Gargano. I mean, he he really liked that stuff. Um, I think that it was, and and to the credit of WWE, they bent over backwards for him. You know, when he said that he wasn't going to come. Uh, during the pandemic, they could have just replaced him then, um, or done, you know, a temporary thing or whatever, you know, they, you know, they allowed him to work from home. The, the issue is, is that, you know, he wasn't home, so he couldn't work from home either. And I don't know when he's going back. He's been gone for a while. I don't know when he's coming back. Um, obviously the situation's not the best. I know his mother's been in poor health for a while, you know, I mean, um, and so him going up there is probably not a good sign when it comes to that. I hope it, hopefully, it, you know, it's not a terrible sign. But um, that's the basic situation with him. But, yeah, I mean, it's a – he's been there for, um, was it five years? Four years? Four years, I think. Um, and, you know, there were a couple of, you know, a lot of different – a lot of different stages you know he was hired to be the when smackdown went to usa network from sci-fi i mean the big thing was the hiring of Moro ronaldo the guy who did the pacquiao mayweather fight and and also who was the new japan announcer and so they brought him in with a lot of fanfare and you know then there were all kinds of issues um you know that that happened there and so they had a split and he was gone and they made a deal and as soon as they made the deal to kind of settle the grievances 
they started renegotiating, you know, and the, the basic compromise or decision was to put him on NXT because the people who were causing his grief were not in NXT. He was working with his basic gist was he was going to work for Paul Levesque and Michael Cole, and he had no problems with them. And everything was, for the most part, going really good. And he was a big cult favorite at, at, at Full Sail. And the wrestlers loved him calling their matches. So, um, cause he imparted that great excitement to the matches. It wasn't everyone's cup of tea, but I know the wrestlers, especially when they had the big matches, they really liked it cause he could, that, that was his trade. And he did do that with the New Japan matches too. I mean, he was really good in big matches. And, um, then, you know, the Corey Graves thing happened, I guess, last year, uh, the end of last year. And that wasn't good. And I think that it was just, you know, it's it's just one of those things. I mean, there's a lot to it, but the gist is is that it wasn't a blow up or anything like that. This was a decision that he made, and I think that, um, you know, that's that's the deal.